Children of the Risen Lord, we come today to worship our God, the God who promises each of us new life and resurrection, who loves us in spite of our doubts, and who can, continues to speak to and through us in many and various ways. And so let us rise now in body or spirit, Cathedral of Hope, and let us sing to the living God. time we come again to give thanks to the risen Christ. May that same risen Christ rise within each and every one of us as we gather in the spirit of all that is good and all that is holy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ that we gather and that we share and that we worship here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. It really is a joy to worship with you this morning as we gather in friendship, as we gather knowing that the Spirit will bless us as we open our hearts and minds 
to all that God is doing amongst us. Yes. Welcome to each and every one of you yes. this day. We hope God's love will warm us, right? Amen. Ooh, we're going to sit close together today. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome, first-time visitors. If you are here with us for the first time, we want to welcome you and make sure that you're connected and a part of our community. We will be in the Ministry and Visitor Center, follow the Connect Care Grow signs, and there will be staff and volunteers there to help you, and we have a gift for you. I think we're doing some mugs still. Ooh, there's a couple different colors. I think we have like choices. We're just all about goodness. So please do grab make your sure mug. that you uh, stop by the Ministry yes. and Visitor Center directly after worship this morning. Today is Low Sunday um, and uh, within the liturgical calendar. And it's called Low Sunday because, of course, last Sunday was Easter Sunday. And so it was large attendance. And so this Sunday is Low Sunday, which means that things are a little different than they were last week. But we are grateful that you are here. <laughs> We also want to extend a very special welcome to all those who are worshiping online with us this morning. We're very grateful for your presence amongst us. Know that we are praying for you wherever you are around the world. And because of that, we want to hear from you. So please do let us know that you are watching this morning. Let us know how that we can might reach out to you and how we can pray with you and for you. And also let us know what you're doing in your own community to bring the good news to God's people. Cathedral of Hope, please join me in welcoming all those who are worshiping online this morning. Welcome. And I hope that you have your weekly with you. If you turn to page six, you'll note that we are beginning the process of um, sort of reorganizing it to sort of help you out a little bit. I don't know if you've noticed that on the beginning page, under what's going on, you're going to have a little table of contents, right? That helps you navigate. Ooh, ah, right? Helps you navigate all of this. And so just so you know, generally the first page is going to be the, the things that are the newest or the things that we're featuring. And then we're going to start with... Um, uh, care, connect, and grow. And as you notice at the top, there's going to be those categories. So um, whether you're doing children's ministry, whether you want you are grieving and you need a ministry that cares for yourself, whether you want to grow in a Bible study, um, follow those pages along and you will find the ways in which you can connect, you can grow in your faith, and you can feel cared for and care for others. And we want to make sure that you are following that along. There are so many exciting ministries coming forward. We are going to have some amazing conversations um, on race that are sacred. We are going to be having, helping you if you want to grow um, in your spiritual life. I'm leading a Bible study on Tuesday nights. It's going to follow this sermon series. Um, if you want, if you are struggling with some grief, we have a class for you. If you are thinking about coming out or, or have friends that are coming out and you want to experience that, there's just amazing things coming up. So we hope that you will connect and look forward to all the information there. It really is important that you do follow your uh, weekly because that is where a lot of our information is. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can always check us out on Facebook and of course yeah. on the church's website uh, to keep connected in what's happening here in this congregation. We want to say thank you to everyone who made last Sunday just a yes. spectacular event for so many and so many wonderful ways. Would you please show your appreciation to all those who made last week's services yeah. just incredible. We also want to say a big thank you to those of you who have already made your commitments to a new entry for a new era. Um, as you uh, can see on Cedar Springs side of our uh, campus, there is a, a new driveway going in uh, that will bring people onto the campus. There will also be a new sign and a monument uh, that will be proudly proclaiming that Cathedral of Hope is here. And so we want to thank you for your commitments. We also want to invite you, if you have yet not made a pledge and would like to, uh, there are pledge cards available and we would like to have all those pledges in uh, by the end of April if that is possible. Um, and if you would like some more information about the new entry for a new era, um, I'll be leading an information meeting today uh, following the 11 o'clock service about 12.30 um, in the choir room. So uh, please do stop by there uh, if you're around and I'd be more than pleased to tell you more information about a new entry for a new era. And on page nine under our connect, um, we want to highlight our Hope Bowl. So last year we all went bowling and we had a great time. Who went last year and had a lot of fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am not very good, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, and so we wanted to encourage you. It's a great time to connect. You, it's, you know, all ages, everyone is present. Um, and so we want to make sure that you are excited about coming and get your tickets. And so we have a fun video. Hope, Hope Bowl, we do. Look here. Yeah. What's going on everyone? I am Chris and I am standing inside of the Valero Eulis, not to be confused with Valero, the gas station. And I have some really cool news for you all. We are having our second annual 
Bolathon, Cathedral of Hope, and it is going to be a great, great night. Right now, this place is empty. Uh, I have never seen a bowling alley this empty. It's kind of a little bit spooky, a little weird, but uh, also kind of cool. But on April 20th from 6.30 to 9, <laughs> we are going to pack this place out. People will start arriving at 6 o'clock. They'll be able to check in, get their shoes, pick out a lane and everything. They'll be able to bowl all they want to for two hours. And we have bumpers for the kids or the adults that need the bumpers. <laughs> and uh, other than that, it should just be a great time. Music will be playing. We're going to have a good time. It is going to be a great, great time, and you don't want to miss it. So come out, uh, bring your friends, bring your frenemies, so you can beat them in bowling and have those bragging rights. We look forward to seeing you here. <laughs> the is I can't bowl half that well. So come help me make a fool of myself on April 20th from 6.30 to 9. Well, I'm out of breath. <laughs> That's awesome. Sign me up for a bumper. Well, I do hope that you will join us on uh, Friday the 20th. You can find out more information about Hope Bowl uh, directly after worship the service. There is a uh, Hope Bowl table um, mm -hmm. in the uh, fellowship hall, so please do stop by uh, before you leave this morning. We also want to give thanks for the flowers this morning. Flowers are given to the glory of God by uh, Gary Anderson in loving memory of his mother, Juanita Loving Pruitt. Uh, we are grateful for her life and grateful for her memory. It is in that hope and in that joy this morning that we gather for worship. Let's rise now and greet one another in peace. Now for our Hebrew lesson. It is from the first chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Hear these words. Now the word of God came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh, most high God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a child. But God said to me, Do not say I am only a child, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says your God. Then God put out a hand and touched my mouth and then said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over dominions to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, and to build, and to plant. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen.
So last Sunday, we reminded ourselves of this light of Christ. Not just the light of Christ that was born at Christmas, but the light of Christ that was relit and reborn in us as a part of the resurrection experience and blessing. So as we come this morning, help us, O oh God, to burn brightly that light of Christ as we pray. The light of Christ has come into the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never been able to put it out. So liberating Christ, shine your light into this world. Shine your light into our lives. Shine your light into the prisons of our world, the places where we are held for the sake of others, for the things we have done, and for the things we believe. Unlock the chains that bind people. Unlock those chains within each and every one of us that we might lay them down, leave them behind in the empty tomb. Risen Christ, shine your light into the tombs of our world, the places where death reigns through fear bereavement, broken relationships, and injustice. Give flesh to the dreams of life. For a healed planet, food to eat, an end to war. Freedom from persecution and oppression, a world in which peace and justice kiss. Compassionate Christ, Shine your light into the darkness of our lives. The people who need your living presence with them today in illness, tragedy, despair, loneliness, worry. Grant them by your spirit the comfort of your presence, the reassurance of your protection, the relief of your peace. And today, O oh God, grant us this that we might live today in order to be an answer to the prayers of others. Amen. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the temple authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after saying this, the Savior showed them the marks of the crucifixion. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As my Abba God has sent me, so I send you. And Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails and put my finger in the mark of the nails, 
and my hand in spirum, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the gospel of hope. Praise, Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. has given you as we invite the Holy Spirit to bless this word. Let us pray. Almighty and loving one, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the risen Christ that meets us this day, greets us with peace, and invites us into holy conversation, into sacred moments of our lives, that we too might see Jesus standing amongst us this day. And so, O oh God, as we come into this house of worship, as we pray and as we sing, as we open our hearts, may we hear your voice speaking now, that we might be hearers and doers of your word. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. So we begin a new sermon series here at Cathedral of Hope this day as we spend the next few weeks thinking about this God that is still speaking. Uh, this God who is still speaking to those who were witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus and those who are bearing testimony to the good news of Christ this day. The God who is still speaking. I do not believe that the last word of God evaporated into the atmosphere at the final dot of the book of Revelation. I believe that this God who inspired the word that we call the Holy Bible, this God who is with us, is a God who is still speaking. And a God who, through the revelation of our lives, enables people not only to hear the good news, but to receive the good news. Indeed, this resurrected experience of God in Jesus is an opportunity for those and for us to claim the reality of a transformed life, to claim the reality of lives that are empowered to do God's work in the world today. And you and I, as followers of Jesus, are called into that compassionate, loving kindness with one another in those acts of justice, in those acts of praise, in those acts of proclamation. You and I are encouraged to enable the world to hear the good news. God is still speaking. How many of us believe that this day? God is still speaking. Can I get an amen? God is still speaking. And God moves in mysterious and wonderful ways. God was still speaking to the disciples following that resurrection experience. And it reminds me as I come to this post-resurrected season, it reminds me that this one they called Thomas was not unlike many of us. This one that we call Thomas, this one who has got this new nickname, Doubting Thomas, is a, a Thomas who, in, in all senses of the world, would perhaps very much like us. A God or a Thomas who doubted this experience of the resurrection. 
and just needed some evidence, just needed some proof that, that this Jesus who said would be risen from the dead was truly risen from the dead. Doubting Thomas. Chris uh, told us in staff meeting just a, a few weeks ago that on Tuesday mornings he listens to a podcast and the, peop the person who was uh, preaching that morning was talking about Doubting Thomas. And he was disappointed that this one that they called Doubting Thomas uh, suddenly had this nickname because of one thing he did in his life. That, that prior to this Doubting Thomas experience, prior to that experience, Thomas was just like all of the other disciples. He had followed Jesus, lived with Jesus, indeed had been sent out just like all of the other disciples to heal the sick and two by two to be reminded of that sense of good news. And yet we forget all about the experiences of Thomas. We, we focus only on this one experience when Jesus comes back into that upper room, says, peace be with you, and invites Thomas to place his hands in the nail prints where Jesus would have hung just a while ago. I think many of us live with nicknames I believe that many of us, if we have done something in our lives, are usually labeled by that one thing, rather than remembering that our lives are a continuum, and God is still speaking, and God is still working, and God is still healing, and God is still restoring us to our full of resurrection. We judge so often one another just on one instance of our lives, just like Doubting Thomas. But if the truth be known, each and every one of us is a work in progress. That each and every one of us is being transformed, as the Apostle Paul would say, in the twinkling of an eye into a new creation, a new being. God is still speaking. And on this day, we, we invite ourselves to believe that God is still speaking through us. God is still speaking through you and you and you and you, that God is still showing up and the evidence of a risen Christ is still present with us when we allow ourselves to live in the focus of Christ. God is still speaking through you. I lose count of the number of times that I have been in conversation with people over the years when I have known without a shadow of a doubt that something that someone has said to me has been made perfectly purposeful for me. In those moments of conversation, perhaps even I was praying for a sign from God or asking God to give me some clarity about where I should be going or what I should be doing, and that through conversations with people, I have heard the voice of God. Now, many of you have said that you hear that through people like, like, like me and, and Reverend Aaron and, and Reverend Michael and Minister Winner Laws and, and those of us who are called to this particular role of being pastors. But I don't believe that God speaks any more powerfully through people like us than God speaks through you. I believe that God speaks through every one of us as we allow our lives to be in that presence of a God who, who comes to us this day and says, would you but just believe? Would you just believe? Would you just believe? This, this God that, that we experience, this God that we worship, is not just a God of the ancient times, but a God of the present moment, and speaks through you and me when we allow our lives to speak the truth of God. When we allow ourselves to believe, like the Hebrew Scriptures said to us in the book of Jeremiah, I knit you together in your mother's womb. I knew you even before you were born. And I lay my hands upon you that you might speak truth in my name, that you might speak truth into the world, that, that you might speak truth to power, to injustice, to all of the isms that we find in our world today, that you might lift your voice in the adoration of this God who in Jesus Christ gave us a revelation of God's love and God's compassion. 
And I believe that the one way in which we know if God is speaking today, if God is speaking through you and me, is the God who encourages us to speak that word of love and grace to one another. I've said this before, and in a world today where we are so divided, I truly believe that if your religion teaches you to hate, then you should find a new religion. That the way in which we know that God is still speaking is when the extraordinary things arise out of extraordinary or perhaps ordinary people like you and me. That this God who knit us together in our mother's womb, this God who has laid hands on us, this God who has spoken to us in baptism, this God that is speaking to us this day is encouraging us to help others believe that this God has not abandoned us, but that this God is truly with us in all of us. Not, not one of us is left behind. Not one of us is left out. If we would but just believe this day that somehow this God who spoke to Thomas, this God who spoke to Jeremiah, this God who has spoken through the prophets and through the disciples and through people of our past that we uphold as saints, is speaking through you, is encouraging you to speak your truth, to speak your love, and to speak it in ways that others might be lifted up as well. It always uh, amazes me that we would attribute God's voice to others without thinking that God might be speaking through us. How many of you have had that experience when you have sat in conversation with one another that suddenly you have heard the voice of God? Now, you might not have labeled it the voice of God because people then think we're crazy. What do you mean you hear voices? <laughs> but there is no doubt in my world and in my life that God has used you to speak to me, and I pray that God has used me to speak to you. That this God is still present. This God is still speaking. This God is encouraging us to speak out and to speak out against all of the injustices of our world, to speak out against the way in which the church treats people, to speak out in ways that will lift people up and find their salvation, find their hope in God. And when we are silent, the psalmist reminds us that if we remain, remain silent, then the, the stones would begin to speak praise to our God because God wants to still speak. God still wants God's presence to be known in the world. Just before coming down this morning, I was on Facebook, my last Facebook post for a few hours so that I can uh, withdraw just for a few minutes. And on Facebook this morning, there was a, uh, a news report from the BBC in Great Britain. And as I looked on that screen, I, I saw the, the face of someone that I know personally very, very well. Jenny Donovan is a member of my congregation back in Bournemouth, England, when I was 23 years of age. And she had just been featured on the BBC because she is a, a chiropodist. She's a, a, I think you call that a, a podiatrist. Somebody help me out here this morning. <laughs> someone who works with feet. We call it podiatrists, thank you, thank you. We call them chiropodists. It's a much, much nicer word, I think. But anyway, um, <laughs> and, um, and, and she was retired. She's been a chiropodist or a podiatrist all of her life. And she was being featured on the BBC because she was using her gift, the gift and a skill that she has had all of her life. She was using this gift to clean the feet and to do the nails of those who are homeless in our community.
And she was uh, recorded on the, on the news channel as she was outside on the street and she'd set up a bowl of hot water and people were just able to come, homeless folks who were just able to come and to have their feet massaged and then you could see her chopping away at them. God is still speaking. God is still speaking. I believe that God is still speaking to those who are less fortunate than ourselves when we do an act of kindness for one another. It doesn't have to be through prophetic words. It can be through the general actions of our lives. God is still speaking. God is still encouraging us to use the gifts of our lives to make a difference in the world. When I was first ordained, it was that same woman who sat down with me at a coffee shop and she said to me, Neil, she said, I've watched you. I, I perhaps should put this in a context. Uh, she used to babysit for me when I was a tiny little baby for my mother. And she had grown and I, I had lost touch with her. And, and we came back together through, through the church. But, but she sat with me. She said, I've known you. She said, I've wiped your butt. <laughs> you don't want to hear that sometimes. <laughs> she said, I have seen you grow in, in, in numerous different ways. She said, and now you have this degree. She said, and I just invite you to be conscious that every time you walk into the pulpit, you would remind yourself, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> she said, you could use all of the grandiose language that you've learned and all of the deep theological understandings that you've learned, but I invite you to be reminded always to keep it simple that God is still speaking and that God speaks to our hearts and to our minds and often speaks through you and me to transform the world. I invite you as we begin this post-resurrection series, this post-resurrection uh, experience of our God that like Thomas, we might allow our belief to speak its truth but our knowing of the Holy Spirit that lives within our lives, that we might encourage that still small voice within us to speak out to the world and to speak words of affirmation and love to one another, to speak words of justice and peace and common goodness, to speak words that will confront the systems of racism and phobias and xenophobias and all that divides us, that we would speak the Word of God to all of those places so that the voice that we believe spoke to Thomas, the voice that spoke to Jeremiah, the voice that spoke through the prophets would speak through us this day. God is still speaking through you. I pray that you will believe that. I pray that you will embrace that. And I will pray for each of us that we will use our voice to the voice of God and bring wholeness to our world. May God bless us as we allow God to speak through you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. Mm, you're bum, so, okay. Um, <laughs> so if this week is low Sunday, last week was High Holy Week. And I don't know if you know it, that about 3,000 people came and worshiped in the midst of our community. It was a wonderful week where we had two new partnerships. First, on Friday at noon, our Good Friday, we had a womanist and black LGBTQ worship experience. We had seven preachers, and we ended in under an hour and 15 minutes. And it was amazing. We had other UCC ministers. We had Disciples of Christ ministers. And I wanted to give a special, uh, for you to give a special applause to Minister Winner because she organized it all. And it was amazing. <laughs> 
There was almost 100 people at noon. It was phenomenal, and it was an amazing partnership. And as you also know, we partnered with Wilshire Baptist Church. We went to their Monday Thursday service. They came to our Good Friday service, and we got several letters um, from their congregants. We got several letters from people who were a part of that, and one of them I want to read a little bit to you. And it says this, Last Friday was truly one of the most amazing, inspiring, and transforming worship experience I have ever been a part of. There aren't really words to grasp all that I felt, yet I am so thankful for this partnership. Thankful for the grace of Cathedral of Hope, compassion, our leadership, I have watched, mostly as an outside observer, she said, as you have taken very intentional steps, first within your church community, to be an instrument of healing through some of the struggles and disappointments of past times in your church's history. I know that for a long time, COH has been a servant to the community, ministering to the least of these, those whom needs are greatest, those the rest of the world often doesn't even take time to see. However, and perhaps what amazed me the most and humbled me when I was here is that your dedication as a church to building bridges within communities who for many years were building walls to keep you out. Thank you for reaching out for your grace, for your forgiveness and your love, for believing healing is possible and trusting the transformation of power of living and a still speaking God. Amen. Amen. That is, that is to all of you, and that is what we do here. And so as we begin to take our tithes and offerings, receive the ways in which God has blessed you and, then, and is blessing us through you, know that this is why you give. You give because our community builds bridges when other people build walls, and people are transformed through your love and grace and generosity. This is why we give. Would I know you now if you walked into the room? If you still the crowd, if your light dispelled the gloom, and if I saw. Would 
I am missed you now if you left and closed the door would my flesh cry out I don't need you you. And so as we are here and we are reminded that we believe and follow and serve a still speaking God. And so we come to this community meal, we come to the meal that is commemorated in Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, where we are reminded that Jesus had a message while he was on earth and that that message did not stop with his death. That message continues on, first in those first disciples, and now into each one of us. God is still speaking in our midst through our lives. And so how he commemorated it was when he was in that upper room with his closest disciples, he modeled for them how to move forward, speaking the truth and beauty of God's goodness. And he said, the bread, I give thanks for it and I break it, reminding you that whatever is broken, God will make new again. Whatever is built, God will break those walls and build those bridges, first through this life and this body and then through us. And then he took the cup and he gave thanks for it as well, and he poured it out to each one of them, reminding them, saying, this is the very essence of who I am, and it will not stop with me. It will go on in you. Take this and drink it, not only remembering me, but speaking the truth of all that I've taught you. Continue on speaking in the name of God. Let us pray. O oh God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of grape and grain. Bless this feast as you grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise up as the body of Christ for the world breathe new life into us and then send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Amen. Amen. As the lay minister of worship, come forward to prepare a place for all of us. A simple reminder that this table belongs to God and this table has been set for you. It does not matter if you are a member of this church or of any church, for we understand that the sharing of this meal in Jesus' name is an ancient vision of God's feast for all peoples. And so at the usher's invitation, we invite you to please come.
Dear God, thank you for this grape and this grain. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your grace. May we speak the truth no matter who we encounter. May our hands show love. May our feet walk the justice path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. for others. We give thanks, O oh God, for this blessing this morning. May we all now be blessed in the name of the one who creates us, the one who redeems us, and the one who sustains us. Give thanks as God is speaking through us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.